explain something for each one. Now, the main important thing here, guys, is we have x squared minus 13x minus 48 divided by x plus 3. Okay? So basically, if you guys see this, is we're dividing. This is your divisor. This is your dividend. All right? Now, when we go ahead and divide these, again, we use, make sure they're in descending order. We choose our x. Okay? x divides into x squared x times. Then what we do is once we have this divided into there, we multiply, Gavin, this by both of our binomials. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is positive 3x. Then what we simply do is we subtract our rows. And it's very, very important, guys, when you're doing this, that you're very diligent and careful with your work. x squared minus x squared is 0x squared, right, or just 0. Negative 13x minus 3x is a negative 16x. Okay? So now once we get to here, now we start the process all over again. Wait, hold on. I thought it was a negative. Add that, add that. Think about it. Think about it again as subtracting, subtracting money. You owe me $13, right? You borrow three more dollars. You now owe me 16. Correct? Is that negative minus plus and all that? It's just out of the picture. No, it's the same thing. Negative is owing, right? Negative is O, positive is what you have. Correct? Would that make sense? So you owe me $13. You're going to minus, you're going to borrow three more dollars. So therefore, if you owe me 13, you borrow three more, that's a negative 16. You're subtracting the rows. Ooh. You're subtracting yeah. the rows. You're not doing 13 plus eight. You're subtracting rows. Right. Individual. It's subtracting rows going down. So then we just do this again. x divides into negative 16, <laughs> x, and negative 16 times. Then we follow again the process. Multiply negative 16 times here, multiply negative 16 times here. So therefore, what we obtain is negative 16 times x is a negative 16x. Negative 16 times 3 is a negative 48. Then again, ladies and gentlemen, we subtract, or not to subtract the rows, we subtract the, um, we, yeah, we subtract the two rows from each other. So again, I insert the negative. Negative 16 minus a negative 16, that becomes a double negative positive, which goes to 0. Here, I can't subtract the negative 48, but it's actually I can, it's just all the way up here. Negative 48 minus a negative 48, again, is a 0. So what I want you guys to understand <coughs> is x plus 3 divides into x squared minus 13x minus 48 x minus 16 times. Why does it divide evenly? Because there's no remainder. Just like when I say 18 divided by 6 is 3 with no remainder. Correct? Correct. It's the same thing. The other thing I want you guys to understand is if I was going to rewrite this as a multiplication problem, what could I write? x plus 3 times x minus 16. Sure, yes. I should have, should have had you guys raise your hand. But yes, x plus 3 times x minus 16 equals this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, real quick, why would this be important? Why do we, what form do we call this? What form do we call this? Factor form. Why is the factor form so helpful to us when we're, when we're uh, solving? What factor form allows us to do, guys, is because when we can take our factored form and set it equal to 0, we can now apply the zero product property and solve for the zeros. I could now solve for the zeros, right? Do you guys see what the, does anybody know what the zeros are just by looking at them in their head? Yeah. x equals three negative 3 Six and four. positive 16. Guess what? Do you guys see that? So what I want you guys to understand is, if here's a division problem, but by going through the division problem, I'm able to identify the factors. And now by identifying the factors, I can find the zeros. And I'm just going to tell you, hint, hint, that type of question is going to come up. Nobody is really concerned 